in this tutorial, we will be looking at uh, a simple 50 ohm transmission line terminated in this characteristic impedance and, um, and what happens uh, at the reflection coefficient, uh, the impedance seen from the generator as we change various parameters. The first thing that we will need to do is to go to project options, double click on it and select the frequency range at which we would like to work. For example, let's choose a frequency, a single point, at 3 GHz. So you choose 3 GHz, click single point, remember to click on apply all the time, and now you can see that the range is just one frequency of 3 GHz. Let's have a look at the global units. Um, in terms of frequencies, it'd be more convenient if I changed it to GHz, which I can do easily, like that. Uh, Usually, you would also change the values of inductance, the units of inductance and capacitance, but we won't be using any discrete components in this design, hence I won't touch them for now. The length is in millimeters, and for the frequency we're working at, that is good enough. So we click on OK, and then we go to Circuit Schematics, right-click, and select New Schematic. We call it Transmission Line 1. OK, so we've got the schematic window now. We need to get the components in. As I said, you can do this in two ways, either by pressing Ctrl L or by going to the Elements tab and finding your elements there. I will use the uh, latter method just so that you know uh, where the elements are. I would like to have a transmission line, which is here. I'll expand and I'll choose a physical transmission line. A physical transmission line uh, will allow me to specify the length of the line in uh, millimeters. So there are a few lines here. If you just hover over with the mouse, you can see what each one is. Um, this is a transmission line um, uh, in physical form. Uh, this is an open circuited line. This is a short circuited line. For the moment, we'll just get our transmission line. And then we um, will also um, want to terminate this transmission line in uh, some impedance. Uh, if you want to maximize what's on your schematic, you can just click on this button, View All, and then maximize what's in the schematic. Now, to get the uh, resistance, which I uh, want to use to terminate the line, I will just um, press Control L and type RES and you can see that that gets me the resistor all the same. To rotate the component just right click and you rotate it as much as you like, place it at the end like so and there you've got your transmission line connected to a one ohm resistor. You also need to put a ground which you can select from the top row of buttons up there and connect it to the bottom of the resistor there. Now, we'd like to change the value of the resistance to 50 ohms so that our characteristic our, um, transmission line is terminated in its characteristic impedance. So now, we've got a circuit which comprises of transmission line uh, terminated in its characteristic impedance. You can see that the transmission line characteristic impedance is 50 ohm. You may change that if you so wish. We have an electrical length which is 10 millimeters. Um, this is showing you the electric constant of the line. Um, this is related to the loss uh, of the transmission line. And the frequency for this specific type of transmission line is only, account, is only used to uh, uh, scale the losses. So you don't need to change that frequency at all uh, for this particular circuit. Now, we'll need some form of test port to be able to see what's going on in the circuit which we've just put together. So just go to the top row, click on port. Again, you can rotate this with the right, with, by right-clicking on the mouse. Just place it. If you want to connect it to your line, you can see that as I hover over on one of the terminals, it, the cursor changes into a wire. So just click there with the left, and then click again on the second terminal that you want to connect with the left button of the mouse. And there we are. Now, what does this circuit represent? 
uh, you can see this port here is just like the port of a network analyzer uh, and hence it can be considered either as just a 50 ohm termination or and as it is more appropriate in this case as a, a generator which you could see you could imagine there with a 50 ohm internal resistance okay uh, this is because you can output power from the port and, and, and see what happens when you get reflected or you can just maybe have power coming in from a different port perhaps on this side and then see what power gets absorbed on this other side so ports can be two things can either be considered as simple terminations, resistive terminations or they can be considered as a generator with a 50 ohm uh, internal resistance in series with it now we put together our schematic, we can go back to the project tab and we can uh, decide which graphs we would like to plot. In this particular case it would be interesting to see the reflection coefficient or the S11 uh, to see if we get any reflections along the line and what impedance we see from port 1 when we look in. We can do so by going to graphs, right clicking select a new graph and then we can choose either a rectangular graph or a smith chart or many other things but for this particular measurement a very um, useful um, graph will be the smith chart so we'll choose that now a smith chart appears you just right click on the graph you select add new measurement you want to select the schematic from which your measurement comes from in this case transmission line one and you would like to, you need to select which um, measurement you want to perform. There is a number of measurements that you may want to perform. Uh, the S11 is one of them because it gives you the um, reflection coefficient uh, effectively uh, of the line. But for example, you can browse around and see what other linear measurements are um, available. Uh, if you go through this list, you can see that as you select a um, a specific measurement and it will tell you uh, what the measurement is down here for example Z in will give you the input impedance at a specific port now we've only got one port in our schematic transmission line one so the port index at which we'll be carrying out the measurement is one you don't need to uh, do anything on here you can see that here the format is complex which is what we want we want the magnitude and phase and uh, you can just click on apply okay and then you can just simulate the circuit and what you see is that the impedance uh, in this case is 50 ohms so is this what we expected if we go back to the schematic we have a 50 ohm um, internal resistance generator feeding a 50 ohm line terminating this characteristic impedance and hence there should be no voltage reflected and we should see an impedance of 50 ohm irrespective of the length of the line but we can change the length of the line if we want to to play around with it and see what happens so let's just click on the screwdriver and then click on length and this will allow us to tune the length and see real time what happens on the speed chart I just press escape to get the cursor to its original shape and go to the graph and now you can click on the slider and you can change the electrical length of the line and see what happens without re-simulating or anything. So at the moment you can see the nominal value changes up here but nothing is changing in terms of the, the Z-in of the input impedance seen at port 1. There's absolutely no change at all. And that is because um, the line is matched and there's no reflection. If you wanted to change the range over which you're tuning your length, you can just select a different minimum, for example 1, and a different maximum up here, for example 40, press enter, and then you can extend the range over which you tune your circuit. And you can see that there's still no influence at all um, at on, the, on the impedance by changing the length. We said that we were going to look at the reflection coefficient. However, we know that there is a very clear relationship between reflection coefficient and impedance. 
and they are directly related by a relatively simple uh, mathematical expression, which you have been taught in the lectures. However, if we wanted to, we could add another measurement, and we just go to add a new measurement, and choose port parameters, S to port 1 from port 1. You're basically looking at the power reflected into port 1 when the power was actually put out from port 1 itself. So you're putting some power out from port 1 and then some of it would be reflected and you want to you wanna see um, how much of that gets reflected. That's the whole point of the S11 measurement. So we click on apply. The measurement appears here now. And uh, we can re-simulate. And you can see that the S11 and the Z in are exactly in the same point on the Smith chart. The reason for that is that the reflection, the, the Smith chart is actually a polar plot of the reflection coefficient. So you are putting uh, a reflection coefficient um, on, a, on a graph where this is the zero value and this is the radius, which can vary according to how much reflection you've got. And then this reflection coefficient is a complex uh, quantity, and hence it will have magnitude and phase, and the phase will be shown by this kind of angle. Now, in this particular case, we can't see um, this very clearly because um, obviously we have a match line, and hence there is no reflection. But in our next example, this will become clearer. The Smith chart is nothing but a polar plot of the reflection coefficient. So you're plotting your reflection coefficient in magnitude and phase. Then superimposed upon this polar plot, there is the Smith chart, which allows you to convert easily between reflection coefficient and impedance. And we know that there is a very clear relationship between the two, but it may be easier, instead of calculating it algebraically, to just have a chart that allows you to make the connection very easily and directly.